So when something repeats or happens over and over again in the same order, it is called a cycle. So there are cycles happening all around you all of the time. So in all cycles, there is a starting point. Things in a cycle always come back to the starting point before starting over again. So some examples that repeat or occur over and over again for cycles might be the days of the week. We go Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and it repeats. Even the cycle of the school years that you have at the beginning of the school year, the end of the school year, then you go to the next grade. So cycles are series of events that repeat again and again in the same order. So can you feel the earth moving? So probably not. Even though you can't feel it moving, it's moving very quickly in two different ways. So think about what you learned in first grade. So the earth rotates or spins around its axis. Earth also orbits or moves in a path around the sun. So over the next few lessons, we're going to learn how these two types of movements, or these two types of movement, are directly related to the cycle of daytime and nighttime, as well as to the cycle of the four seasons. So there are several different kinds of cycles that occur in nature. Some of nature's cycles repeat quickly, where other cycles take longer to repeat. Some cycles take place every day and night. So listen carefully to identify the main topic of the cycle of daytime and nighttime, as well as learn why intense or strong sunlight is so important to life on Earth. A cycle is like a circle that goes around and around. Just like there are circular objects that go around and around, there are also many natural cycles that occur on Earth that happen again and again too. A cycle is a sequence of events that repeats itself again and again. Just like you can pick any part of this circle to be the starting point, we choose one part of each natural cycle to be our starting point. This makes it easier to talk about all of the parts of the cycle. The most important thing to remember is that cycles always come back to the chosen starting point before starting over again. So let's go ahead and quietly stand up and face the front of the classroom. Spin around in a circle until you come back to facing the front of the classroom, just once. So when you do that once, you've just come back to your starting point. All living things are part of a cycle of life that keeps going around and around. What does this mean? It means that almost all living things are born, grow, reproduce, or make babies, and eventually die. The reproduction of living things is one way that life continues on Earth. A life cycle includes each stage that a living thing goes through from birth to adult. So here the word stage means a particular time in the growth of something. The word stage can also have other meanings such as a raised platform on which people dance, sing, and act. You will hear a lot more about life cycles later in this domain. First, there are other cycles in nature that make life on Earth possible too. Earth spins around and around, a never-ending cycle that shapes everything we do here on Earth. So, as I talked about earlier, the Earth is constantly moving, but we can't feel it move. As Earth turns around, part of it faces the Sun, and part of it faces away from the Sun. So remember, the Sun is a giant star that provides light, heat, and energy for the Earth. Can you guess what cycle happens when our part of Earth faces the Sun? and then rotates to face away from the sun? Did you guess the cycle of daytime and nighttime? The cycle of daytime and nighttime is the result of our planet rotating or spinning around on an imaginary line called an axis. What's an axis? Well, imagine a spinning basketball turning around and around. Then try to picture an imaginary line running through the basketball from the bottom to the top. That imaginary line is what we call an axis. So if you look here in this picture, you can see the axis runs through. It's an invisible line. Earth's axis passes through the north and south poles. It takes 24 hours for Earth to rotate or spin one time on its axis. So what's one thing that people usually do during the daytime? 
And what's one thing that people usually do at nighttime? Rotation is the movement of Earth on its axis. This controls the cycle of daytime and nighttime. Earth takes 24 hours to turn or rotate back to the position from which it started. Rotation takes us from daytime to nighttime and back to the very beginning of daytime again before the cycle starts over. As Earth rotates, light from the sun falls on one half of Earth. We call this daytime. The other half of Earth is in darkness and we call this nighttime. As Earth continues to rotate, the part of Earth that had sunlight moves into darkness and the part that had darkness moves into sunlight. This is a never-ending cycle of daytime and nighttime. The cycle of daytime and nighttime begins with sunrise in the early morning. Sunlight hits our planet and moves across Earth from east to west. When we see the sun rising in the east in the morning and setting in the west in the evening, it is because of the Earth rotating or spinning. For people on Earth, it makes sense to say that the sun rises in the morning. Each morning at dawn, the sun appears in the eastern sky on the horizon. The horizon is the line we see in the distance where the ground meets the sky. At dawn, some people say, look, the sun is coming up. But is the sun really moving? No, the earth is moving, but it looks to us like the sun is moving. This first appearance of the sun above the eastern horizon is called sunrise. Over the course of the day, the sun appears to move across the sky, gradually following its path from east to west. In the evening, the sun sets in the west. Ever so slowly, it gets lower in the sky and disappears below the horizon. That's when people say the sun is going down. But is the sun really going down? No. Why can't we see it anymore? This disappearance of the sun below the western horizon is called sunset. Based on what we can see from the Earth, where we live, it seems sensible to say that the sun moves across the sky each day, rising or moving up in the east, and setting or sinking down in the west. But that's not actually true. It is the daily rotation or spin of the earth that makes the sun appear to rise and set each day. So have you seen a sunset recently? How would you describe it? This daily rotation explains why there is always daytime and nighttime on Earth. As it spins, certain parts of Earth's surface faces the sun receiving its heat and light. When it is light on one side of Earth, it is dark on the other side. So if it's daytime where you are right now, then on the other side of the Earth it's nighttime, and the children there are sound asleep. When you're nestled in your bed tonight, children on the other side of the planet will be waking up to a bright new day. So right now, is it day or night where we live? And then is it day or night on the other side of the world? How does the cycle of daytime and nighttime affect living things on Earth? The sun is extremely important to life on Earth. All plants, animals, and people rely on the sun in order to thrive or grow well. The sun's energy gives life to plants, which in turn nourish animals and people. So when you nourish something, you provide it with what it needs to grow. The sun's heat keeps the surface of Earth warm enough for plants and animals to survive. In the next few lessons, we will learn all about how the sun affects living things throughout the four seasons. What is the main topic of the read aloud? What is a cycle? What causes daytime and nighttime? How does the rotation of Earth cause daytime and nighttime? In terms of light, what is the difference between daytime and nighttime? In the read aloud you heard, all plants, animals, and people rely on the sun in order to, in order to tend to thrive or grow well. Say the word thrive with me. Thrive. Thrive means to grow and develop. When a living thing receives the things it needs to grow and develop, it will thrive. So what's the word we've been talking about? Thrive. 